I do remember waking up at one point and thinking to myself, I'm going to die. Like wow. this is the end. Like I, I, I feel like I'm going to, I'm going to suffocate. Cause like I could not breathe. Hey, we are your hosts, Nick Smith and Kylie Jo Smith. And if you couldn't tell my voice is back, y'all hear it. La, 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 Yay, la, 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 la. <laughs> I'd hit them, them long, beautiful notes yeah. for everybody. Oh, of course. Yeah. Don't be jealous, y'all. Don't be jealous. Don't hate <laughs> on your boy because I got them vocals. Anyway, um, what's up, Inner Circle? How y'all doing? Hey. Hey, if you're not a part of the Inner Circle, then you uh, are going to miss out on this uh, flash sale we're having on merch because we're trying to clear out our merch. We've been talking about it for a while, but now we get into it. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And so once they've had their fair share and they've picked through everything, then we'll, you know, maybe graciously <laughs> offer that same flash sale to the rest of y'all. Um, <laughs> So if there's anything left, then we will bring that to the outer circle. But inner circle, uh, thank you for supporting. And if you need any more merch, holla at your boy. Yes. We got new merch coming out. Um, we're actually going to go through a different vendor uh, and just kind of have our whole website streamlined so that you can get your stuff hopefully easier. It's going to be and, awesome. And stuff. So. All right. That's that. Let's, uh, we just got to get into this. Because, Let's talk about it. You know, everyone's been talking about it. It's a big deal. Kind of hard Super to avoid Bowl. it. <laughs> just kidding. that's the next episode um Maybe. we ain't talking about that but <laughs> y'all we got covid covid y'all you thought i thought it was just a horse uh sore throat didn't know at the t- at that time that day no. we recorded didn't know had covid till later till later then had to go to uh get tested uh for our job they're like hey you might want to get that checked out and i was like oh you yeah. got what now all these symptoms covid's a thing i forgot <clears throat> um, so yeah, when got tested and yep. we both tested positive. So yes. And so we're going to talk about that because we went two years. Now I say we went two years without getting it, but here's the thing. And I've shared this before we shared it with the inner circle. I've shared it with, you know, our family and friends, our, our actual, like people in our family, Immediate inner circle. family. Um, I'm pretty sure we had COVID before the pandemic here's why now i know everybody there's a lot of people that say that like i've already had covid they say it like that too but i'm not saying it I've like already that had COVID. i've already had it well, it's just like a cold here's the thing no it's not no it ain't um no so we wrapped up a tour in 2019 mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy to think about 2019 was like so long ago it seems like it yeah so long ago christmas but tour. um the christmas tour we wrapped it up got crazy sick after that tour like at the very end of the tour i remember having this like, oh man, like I feel this tickle, like that post nasal drip that you feel when you start to get a cold, Mm -hmm. but then it hit like so hard. Yeah. And it was just like, it was one of the worst, I I would say it's probably the worst I've ever felt. Mm. Um, and I've had children, you know, like given birth, Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) have had, I've had surgery. I've had metal in my feet. This was metal feet. Metal feet. She She called me the bionic foot. (laughs) <laughs> I um, did for a while. <laughs> Forgot about that. But um, yeah, the pin sticking out of my toes, like worse than all of that. Mm-hmm. And we all got sick with it. Like, yeah, I, I, I remember barely getting it. Yeah, you like. Um, he's got an immune system like nobody I know. It just, I don't know, I don't know. It's just, it's like a gift from God or something. It is a gift from God. But anyway, true. Um, yeah, I remember our kids got sick, yep. and then we got it. Yep. And then I remember I had it for like. I just had some sinus stuff and then yeah. I bounced right back. That's, that's usually how this one deals with stuff. It's like, oh, it's in my sinuses. He sneezes a lot. It's like he sneezes everything out because his sneezes are. I got them dad sneezes that'll blow you out of the Clear the code. room. Yeah. But, but <laughs> yeah. And then I remember you were laying in bed for like three or four days. Yeah. Like you were out. I was, I don't, there's, there's periods of time during that that I don't even remember. Like I do remember waking up at one point and thinking to myself, I'm going to die. Like, wow. this is the end. Like, I, I, I feel like I'm going to I'm going to suffocate because like I could not breathe. Yeah. And my family's going to have to find me. And I remember thinking like, oh, my gosh, who, like, is it going to be one of the kids? Is it going to be Nick? Like my sister um, who was living with us at the time. She also got sick really bad. Yep, she got and really she bad. has has asthma. And so like all of this stuff, like it was terrible. And so I say when I say I'm pretty sure we had covid, I don't mean it in the sense of like, oh, yeah, I had a cold or I had the flu like honestly comparing it to what we just experienced Mm -hmm. it was that times 10 like it was so much worse and nick even said he's like i'm pretty sure like 
you must have had like walking pneumonia or something yeah, because the way I bet you would have. Yeah, and I called it. I, I jokingly was like, "Oh, I've got this Ursula virus." Like everyone was like, "What happened to your voice?" Because it sounded like, like my voice did last week. Like, but and at one point I was like, "I can't even like I couldn't." And that happened after the worst of the sickness. Like I got mm-hmm. really sick, was in bed, like, "Oh my gosh, I'm gonna die." Um, thankfully, did not came through that. that. And then even while I was upright and doing fine, like my voice just like it was gone. Yeah, and so. Then the pandemic stuff happened. Then it was like two months later or mm-hmm. maybe a month and a half later, no more traveling. Like I, had, I had just gotten back from Nashville mm-hmm. recording another video and like, nope, can't travel anymore. COVID's a thing. And I was like, all the symptoms that were described, I was like, wait a second, we had this. And that was before the um, <clears throat> antibody test yes. was available. And, and so like we had no way of actually knowing. Yeah, but, but we're pretty sure. And I remember thinking when all that stuff happened, um, I remember being like, well, hold on. I want to. I want to back up a little bit. Actually, a, a couple years before that, uh, my brother, uh, his fiance, died of a flu, mm. and I remember having the conversation in my mind, being like, "People still die from the flu." And she was young. I mean, she was in her thirties. Uh, <clears throat> for some of you, that may not be young, but for us, that's super young. It's young. Um, and and I remember she died of a flu, and I was like, "What? Yeah. How does that even happen? I don't even get it." And then when a few, you know, fast forward a few years later. Uh, Kylie Joe gets sick and I remember her saying like I don't like there's a point where I don't feel like my lungs will take in any more oxygen mm-hmm. like I'm trying to breathe it's just not happening and then hearing about so many families that have been affected by loss and death and uh, people that we know that we've been close to we've lost uh, through the, the global pandemic because of COVID um, and then thinking about that whole situation um, this past week when we got sick um, I remember having that thought of like, I had to force the the gunk out mm-hmm, of my lungs. I was mm-hmm. like forcing myself to cough a lot, just trying to clear my air passage. And I remember thinking like, if I had any other issue that made me frail or made me yeah. weak, um, or if I was adverse to pain, because my throat was killing yeah, me. Yeah. And every time I coughed, it was like razor blades. Like it almost felt like strep throat. Yeah. Um, and every time I coughed, but I had to do it to get the gunk out. I remember thinking, like, I see how people can catch yeah. pneumonia and just mm-hmm. just suffocate because yeah. there was there was a point where I was like, I don't want to have to cough this up, mm-hmm. but I was like, what's my other option? Yeah. Not like, no, I have to do it. Yeah. And so I remember having that thought of like, this is how it happens. This is how mm-hmm. people succumb to the sickness in certain areas, in certain aspects. Well, and for those that, uh, and we've we've really not had a skeptical view of Mm -mm. the pandemic or of the sickness at all just because um well my mom works in healthcare and we have we have several family members who work in healthcare who have seen up close and personal the The nitty-gritty yeah the devastation that this sickness causes not even looking at like the the global side of it but just looking at the interpersonal um effects of it and so we've had kind of a level head and even with like um, you know, vaccines rolling out and the options to mask or not mask. We made decisions for our family. We felt mm-hmm. would help protect um, our family and, and help those protect, we serve. yeah, and the, and the community that we serve in. And so, even looking at all that, it's like we did everything we felt like we should do mm-hmm. to um, to be good stewards of our bodies and to be um, compassionate to the people around us. Yeah, and yet, and here we even are. so, um, and so statistics they got right you man and <laughs> variants i mean you can't account for all of the different strains and strains that we don't we aren't even aware of yet um and so we uh, unfortunately that's that was our lot yeah that's something we knew was a risk you know we knew we knew the job was risky when we took it um but we wanted to share kind of our experience with it because one there's so many people that still it's very like elusive like the idea of covid because maybe you're fortunate enough that you have not gotten sick you don't know anybody who's really been asymptomatic or yeah yeah. and so you've been able to navigate you know kind of under the radar like or maybe you've gotten sick and you didn't share with anybody you didn't have anybody you could go to and be like i had this did you have that yeah Um, which is crazy how much like even sharing on social media, I was like, I don't really want to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to do the obligatory. I got COVID post. No, we'll just but, do a whole podcast episode. About yeah, it. why not? Because um, <laughs> nobody watches that. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm, joshing um, I'm just kidding. But just sharing a few little things in my story, like the amount of people that would message that were like, oh, my gosh, when I had it, I had this. Yeah. And just the weird symptoms that people find that are associated with it. Um, we kind of had the, the categoric like sore throat, 
stuffy nose, runny nose. I was really runny. I felt like it wasn't kind of stuffy till. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> Just <laughs> appreciate hey, that. Real life. Everyone listening. Um, <laughs> and the chest congestion. Yeah. <clears throat> which again, this time was way better mm-hmm. than it had been. Um, and fever. We all had fever. Yep. Uh, Isaiah and Rebecca also got. They, we yeah. did not test them, but. We know they had it. And I the mean, kids, they yeah. bounced back so quick. I know like, like we had heard that. Day. But yeah, Isaiah, I think he was down for two days. He still got a little bit of a, a cough, mm-hmm. but it's not nearly as bad. Like one day he was down completely, just laying yeah. in bed, watching TV, just watching movies all day. Um, Rebecca, like that evening, it, she, it hit yeah. her for about eight hours. Yeah, her fever broke and she was like, I'm good. Yeah, she never good really had a cough, never <laughs> had a uh, runny nose, any of that stuff. No, didn't, they didn't lose any taste. Um, and then... We had we just kind of had that lingering cough, and you had the like super scratched, froggy yeah, voice as, as you, you got to hear. Got to hear. Um, yeah. and then it hit it hits me last. Yeah, I feel like stuff either hits me first, and I have to go through the like taking care of the kids with Nick and like all that stuff, or he gets like through it really fast because he's like on top of it with his immune system, Mister Overproducer of Zinc over here. I think that's the thing. <clears throat> and then. I get hit with it and it like lingers a little bit differently. Yeah. And so then I got hit, uh, was doing like the normal stuff that Nick had. And then yesterday, y'all, I go to take a bite of my sandwich. Couldn't taste it. Bum, bum, bum. And this whole time oh, I was oh, like, do I have a sound effect for Oh, that? no. Take a bite of her sandwich. Couldn't taste it. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. It's so good. Anywho. Um, but like. That was one thing I was like, oh, I'm doing okay. Like, not that I would prefer like coughing up junk to not being able to taste stuff, but I was like, hey, look, I can still taste food. <laughs> and then psych, uh, psych it was so, It's such a weird. If you've lost the the sensation of taste from this, it's not like when you have a cold. Like when you have a cold, like if you blow your nose or you like sniff in, you can like kind of get that flavor back. Mm-hmm. This didn't happen. I was like, oh, it's okay. I'll just blow my nose. It'll be fine. <laughs> and then I go and I was like, oh my goodness, I can't taste it. <laughs> I can't even taste the aftertaste. I took a bite of chocolate, nothing. But let's talk about the blessings we got in that. Y'all, <laughs> we have been trying to get back on our health journey after moving and all that. <sighs> and now and, after COVID. And now after COVID. <laughs> uh, but COVID was kind of a kickstart. I'm not saying COVID was fun and I'm not recommending anybody no. get COVID. No. But I lost like, <clears throat> like four pounds like last week. And that just proves how fat I was. But <laughs> I remember weighing myself. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to eat a lot. I was just downing fluids. I was drinking yeah. water like nonstop and tea and, and um, getting as much rest as I could. I also think we hadn't been resting a lot. It acts, yeah, I, I completely agree. Before like yeah. the weeks leading yep. up to that, we yep. had not been getting the proper amount of rest. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah. So the, the lack of taste, I remember I was like, hey, do you want to got some ice cream and some ice cream? She's like, no, I can't even taste it. Yeah, I took and a I bite like, and I was like. I wish I couldn't taste it because I'm tearing this up. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting all these calories. Let me get. No, I'm just kidding. Well, and it's weird because your body, like, I felt like I could still sense that, like, oh, this is supposed to be sweet. Yeah, because the sensations and, are still there, right? Yeah. And, it's like, just... I was eating spicy chips with my sandwich. Mm-hmm. I could feel the, like, the sensation of spiciness. Like the burn. But I, it wasn't the same. And I was like, this is the worst. Now, today, I will say, Nick made a delicious breakfast sandwich. I chain. put some cayenne pepper on it because I was like, I got to put something on there to wake up whatever's going on. Um, I could taste parts of it. It mm-hmm. wasn't the full. Like, I know it wasn't the full flavor. And then I also took some like essential oil. I took some lavender and I rubbed it on my hands. And then I like deeply inhaled. Mm-hmm. I was like, I got to try to smell something. And I could get like a hint of what I know lavender is supposed to smell like. You know, this, that has to be even more frustrating for people that don't season their food. Oh, like, if you if hey, or God bless it? you. God or bless you. It? Do you think? I don't know. But if you eat bland food normally, like when how do you know when your taste is back? <laughs> like because I, I mean, I season the mess out of my food. It's true. And so like I just that just hit me. It's like <laughs> you're like, I think do you I taste lost anything. Did, I don't know. I, well, and people who are like, I never same. lost any sense of taste. How do we know? How do we know? How do we know? But how, how do truth? we know? Mm-hmm. Put some salt on it. And we'll <laughs> yeah, see. you put a little, sprinkle a little bit of Tony Satri's <laughs> on there, and maybe you, you might some be able adobo. To taste. You some might adobo be able to taste. A little slappy mom on there. <laughs> you might be able to taste. I don't know. This is Dash. Anybody? <laughs> I don't know. Just try it out. Just a Dash. Well, um, <laughs> hopefully, anyone that's dealt with this, uh, like one of our motivators in sharing this with you is let you know, like one, uh, it can be scary to go through this stuff, mm-hmm. um, especially when you have those thoughts of like, how bad is this going to get? Yeah. What's going to happen? 
but also to kind of take away that that mystique from it and mm-hmm. that, that mystery and be like people get this yeah and and if the lord is with you and you are uh, able to fight off the sickness if you're healthy enough to fight it off like there's like it's it's not a death sentence for everybody. Mm. And it's not something that you have to be necessarily afraid of, even though there are scary parts to it. And also to let you know, like it's okay as a believer to be like, yeah, I had COVID because there's such a culture of um, surrounding COVID right now. There's so many different voices that speak into the situation of false theology and bad theology Mm -hmm. around sick uh, in general around sickness. Oh yeah. Around sickness, sickness, physical sickness. Yes. It's one of those things where you, you get into um, debates with people that are all partially on God's side, right? They're all partially taking parts of scripture to be like, well, God wants you healthy, right? Where, whereas that is not untrue, that does not mean that being sick can, like, is always not a part of God's plan. Does that make sense? Or that like, being God's sick not is sovereign over your sickness. Right, or that, I mean. or that when you get sick, that it, that it means you've done something wrong. Yeah, that you haven't um, had enough faith. Or yeah, and like one thing now, I I do appreciate the um, and actually a family member we re- we reached out to them. You know, we let people know like, hey, mm-hmm. we got COVID, pray for us, um, because the prayers of an effectual person are are working. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things that um, my aunt had said, she was like, yes, of course, praying. She sent a prayer to us and gave us these words: uh, "I am healthy. I am well. I'm healed." Mm-hmm. And you know, there's there's always that like theological twist where it's like, if you are fighting in a battle, um, declaring the victory ahead of time seems like premature. It's like, I am healthy. Well, I'm coughing up a lung over here. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, having the faith that I know I am because this doesn't define me and allowing that momentary condition to define you is where we find that defeat. Yeah, that's good. And being able to say, like, even even with the, like, feeling of, like, oh, my gosh, I, I can't cough this out. I cannot take another breath in. Giving into that feeling, mm-hmm. not having something to fight for, that's what leads us into not taking that next breath. Yeah. That's what leads us into, like, okay, I guess this is it. This is my lot. Um, for us, you know, we, we stand on that power. We stand on that victory. And I was reading through, um, well, I, I wasn't reading. I have a Bible app that reads to me. Uh, I can read, but I choose to listen. To, I just want to put that out there. I am literate, <laughs> but I choose to listen to the Bible being read to me. Um, and I was listening to Matthew and Mark. And of course, the stories of Jesus healing people mm-hmm. and how incredibly ridiculous it must have looked to most people that Jesus was yeah. like, well, what's, what's, what's worse for me to say to this person, your sins are forgiven, or to tell them to get up and walk and take their mat? Yeah. Well, okay, so you're going to know that I have power. Get up and take your mat and walk. Yeah. And I think that for for me personally, I need those reminders in scripture. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we need the letters. I love the epistles. I love the Psalms. I love the like, I'm suffering. God help me uh, vindicate me. But I also need that resurrection power yeah. to be so reminded important. like the God I serve who is in me said to him, get up and take your mat and walk. Why would he not say to me, breathe? Yeah. Why would he not instruct me and command me to be healed and go out and do these things? And so for us, I think um, this isn't to say don't don't hyper spiritualize sickness. Of course, if you're sick, you need to go to the doctor. You need to get well. You need care. Yeah. But I think it is important, like you said, not to let that fear about something drive you um, to be fearful of that experience. Yeah, And I think uh, what I was trying to say earlier, I just what you said. Is what I was trying to say, and I, I just want to. That's why we're married. Let's see, God is good. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Um, <laughs> um, what I was trying to say about sometimes you face sickness, um, like understanding that that God is still in control. God still has power, and there still is resurrection power over that. Um, as opposed to saying, "Well, you're sick. You messed up. Yeah. You know, you're living in sin. You're living in darkness. You're living in brokenness. Like we live in a broken world, and sickness is part of that. Like pain is part of the brokenness of this world." And there are things that, as human beings, we're always seeking causality. We're seeking mm-hmm. for a reason to, to point to, well, this is why I was sick. And it's only because this person got this person sick and because this person created this thing and made this. Like, mm-hmm. we're seeking causality when sometimes, like, you just experience pain because we mm-hmm. live in a broken world. Like, mm-hmm. it's, I'm sick. Um, but I'm with that mind, same mind frame, 
I don't like defining myself as sick. I just said that, but I don't like defining <laughs> myself. I prefer to say I'm healing or I'm getting oh, better. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because just like saying I'm a sinner saved by grace, like yep. defining yourself by your sin, defining yep. yourself by your sickness keeps you in that mindset. Yeah. When instead I'm healing or I'm I'm on the way to recovery mm-hmm. or whatever that keeps your mind moving towards health and towards yep. well-being yeah. and towards unity in Christ and, and goodness and all the positivity and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I think that's a better way to um, to frame mm-hmm. your health and your well-being. And a better way to to look at the world is to to continuously uh, put those parameters around whatever you're going through, and not I'm stuck. I'm mm-hmm. going like that's why you hear so many people who are saints in the faith. I'm going through. Yeah, like, I'm not here. I'm not stuck here. Yeah. I'm going through it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm I'm gonna make it through. I'm not stuck in this space. That's good. Well, and I said a lot, but I don't said, know where I was going with that. That was good. And uh, what you said about causality. I mean, that's that's human. How did this happen? Why did this happen? Mm-hmm. Um, and even like when the blind man. When the people came and were like, who, why is he blind? Is it because his mom or his dad? Like, yeah, was it him or his whose parents? Whose fault is it? Yeah. And Jesus is like, please. And so God's glory can be seen. You think he said it like that? You think he sucked his teeth? I, I do think Jesus might have sucked his teeth a few times. I, you know what? Yeah, Peter. I, I bet there were so many times Jesus said things under his breath about these people. Like, I got to tell y'all one more time. Well, he, what? But, and some Nothing. of it's recorded. Barely, barely I say to you. <laughs> Go no, some of it's recorded where he's like, how long must I endure this faithless generation? Look, get over what, here. Let me what, show you Jesus? something. Nothing. And Mark's, anyway. Mark's over there. <laughs> oh, I heard you. Oh, I heard it. I heard it. I'm putting it down. I'm putting it down. They need, the people need to know. Uh, but no, but so, yeah. it, it's something that um, somebody recently said uh, to me. That sounds so like hokey. Someone, someone very close to me once said. No, Wait. but. Um, Someone said they were close to me. <laughs> Sorry. Tropic Thunder. No, that movie. I said something to somebody about like, you know, God is good all the time. You know, we're tired or whatever about our just our uh, season of life of moving and all that. Oh, we're tired mm-hmm. and everything. And they were like, you always you always portray such a positive um, <laughs> like demeanor. I think I, I mentioned that. this in one of our, our other episodes. But something that is is crazy to me is like, what else? What other choice do I have? Like. Yeah, I'm, I've been going through sickness, and yes, this stinks, and yeah, th- nobody wants to be in this position. But if I can't glorify God through it, like there, if there's no yeah. purpose to the sickness other than me just being laid out and coughing a lot, no, there has to be something greater. And so, for you as a believer, mm-hmm. if you've you know if you're struggling through COVID or you've been in any kind of physical rut or going through something, some kind of spiritual sickness, maybe, um. Find like find that grace in it. Find something in it that I'm gonna use this as a testimony because yeah. that is why. That's one of the many reasons why we go through the things we go through is that we can be unified with others who are also going through it to say you're not alone. Mm-hmm. I know what that feels like. Let's let's join in this walk together. But to also say, hey, I'm going through this, but by the grace of God, that's right, with His victory in full view and with His strength guiding me, like. There, there has to be testimony. There's, there's no reason for us to go through things arbitrarily, well, well, which would mean that's what arbitrary means for no reason. <laughs> well, there's, there's um, a devotional or a, a Bible study by Matthew Chandler going through uh, the Psalms, and he talks about suffering and talks about how um, the only difference between a believer and a non-believer is what we do with our suffering because everyone suffers. Everyone's going to mm-hmm. go through some stuff. And it doesn't matter where you are in life. If you haven't suffered up to this point, just take just a breath. Wait. It's coming. You know what I mean? Prepare yourself. But everyone goes through some sort of pain and some sort of suffering. But the difference between the believer and the non-believer is those of us who have hope in Christ, we suffer with hope. Mm. And we suffer with victory. And we suffer while rejoicing. And, and we um, are able to walk through those valleys proclaiming the mountaintop. Because if you're only able to proclaim God's goodness on the mountaintop, then you're living in a faith that isn't sustainable. Mm-hmm. It's not true faith because there's no hope in that. Yeah. Because you don't, you don't hope for something you already have, right? You don't hope for that, which has already been received, but mm-hmm. you have to hope in those, uh, those times of not, those yeah. times of lack. And that's when you hope for something that you don't have yet. Yeah. And you have to know the person who you have hope in mm-hmm. in order to have that hope. Yeah. Because I'm not going to hope in something that uh, can't fulfill me. Mm-hmm. Because that's just called wishing and dreaming. <laughs> like, but if, if you have a hope that is rooted in the, the foundation of the truth of God mm-hmm. and who God is and who he says he is to you, um, then whatever you're going through, you still have a hope and you still have a joy and you can mm. still rejoice and you can still, uh, as a person said, portray 
uh, such a positive light. That portray is such a, that's such a backwards com- uh, comment. <laughs> you know what? You fake being happy really well. I just want to throw that out there. It's, easy. It's as real as easy, it gets. Easy, phony baloney. It's as real as Back it gets. Back off me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, we just want to bring this to you today. Yeah. And hope that it blesses you. Hope that uh, there's something. We're still going to come back with our episode on being freed from mediocrity. Mm -hmm. Because that's coming. Y'all got to know about it. Um, And being freed in order to pursue greatness that God has called you to. Um, But hopefully this blessed you. If it did, please let somebody know about the Nick Smith Podcast. Please share it with somebody. uh, Share this link. Comment below if you've experienced anything uh, related to COVID that you can relate to. Uh, if if God has used COVID in your life to bring about some sort of glory, some sort of testimony that you've been able to share to minister to others, please share that with us. We'd love to hear that. Yeah. So connecting this back to our last episode, just real quick. Real quick. Uh, we talked about getting out of the cycle of negativity and how we can't just rely on that uh, Sunday school answer. Well, because Jesus, mm-hmm. um, unless you actually know what that means, like what the depth of that is. And so yeah. um, I think tying it to what you're saying about like, standing on that hope and that that blessed assurance is only possible when we know like to believe that i'm going to get through sickness i have to understand that jesus overcame sin and death and And if he overcame death i have nothing to fear on the other side of life Mm -hmm. but i also have nothing to fear in this life like not it's not just a someday like oh well i don't have to be worried because then one day eventually i'm going to go to heaven yes but right now the kingdom is here and if i walk in the kingdom of god if i walk in the light as he is in the light then i'm cleansed from all unrighteousness and i am able to walk forward in victory and that's that hope that people won't be able to understand they won't Mm -hmm. be able to to put a I can't quite put the right word on. I don't know how to describe what it is that you're portraying. I'm only going to know that what I see on the surface, but when they're ready to taste and see, then you're able to give an answer for the hope that you have. And, uh, and this isn't anything new. Like this is something that we just were very passionate about. Mm -hmm. Um, but I wanted to connect that to what we had talked about before, because, um, yes, it's good to, to have those Sunday school answers. If you have the Monday through Saturday, reasoning behind mm. it, if you have that that meat behind it and so yes of course please share this with somebody um if you are going through uh this physical sickness or any other kind of physical sickness know that we are praying for you we will pray uh specifically if you ask us to we believe in the power of prayer we believe that um yes. being able to speak to god on behalf of others is a blessing That's right. and we've had so many people praying over us and for us uh through this time that we we can't not share that uh generously as well so um, yeah, I think that's, that's it today. We hope that, uh, you've been blessed by this episode and that, uh, we've been able to connect you to living truth. So go ahead and enjoy the rest of your day. Be blessed. <laughs> Be blessed. <laughs>